Okay, suppose you want to plot the x and y coordinates of a point on the end of a of a link or end of a stick that's spinning around a fixed point at a constant angular speed. Let's say the stick is 0.2 meters long. The angular velocity is 10 radians of rotation per second. And x and y are going to be cosinusoidal and sinusoidal respectively. If you wanted to plot x and y versus time, uh, well, you could draw up a, a table. You could have a bunch of time points, one, two, three, etc. And then you could get out your calculator and you could manually punch in 0.2 times the cosine of 10t when t is 1, when t is 2, when t is 3. You could punch it in for y and then you could plot that on some graph paper and that would take you a long time and you could probably do a really nice job um, but in this day and age it's much faster to do this on a computer plus if someone comes along and says oh, oh I uh, made a mistake there R is actually not 0.2 it's 0.3 well then you've got to go back and do the whole thing again now uh, there's a package called Microsoft Excel which is great at doing this sort of thing all right, if you go to the start menu of your computer, and somewhere in Microsoft Office, you're going to find Microsoft Excel. It's called a spreadsheet. And it looks like a just a giant sheet which has uh, columns with letters and rows with numbers. So how is this going to help us? Well, suppose I want to define the value of r2 and the value of our angular velocity omega I can say I can click on this cell and I can say r2 and I can hit return or I can hit one of the arrow keys and r2 is entered as a, a bit of text in this what's called a cell over here I can put in the value that I want to use for it 0.2 and this is a number and over here in column C uh, row 1, so cell C1, I can say that that's units of meters. I can click on A2, I can type omega, hit return, put in my v desired value of 10, then click on C2 and say that's radians per second. Okay, no programming required so far. This is great. And what I want to do is I want to plot uh, I'm going to make a sort of a little note over here. I'm going to say x is equal to, uh, should I call that r2? If I want to edit this, I can just click on the cell. And up here on this little uh, command line, formula line, I can cursor over to there and I can delete the 2. I call that r2 because in mechanisms, often that crank link is called link 2. But that's neither here nor there. So over here, I can go back and I can finish what I was going to type, which was that x is equal to r cos theta. And down here I can type that y is equal to r sine theta. Just to remind myself of what I'm trying to do here. Now, uh, I can recall that theta was actually equal to omega times time. So to set up this plot, uh, I said before you could go to a piece of paper, you could draw a column of time values which you would call t. So I'm just typing t return. Um, let me define that now. Let me say I'm going to start at time 0. Enter. And I'm going to do this every second for a number of seconds. I can type 0, 1, 2, all the way down. Or another neat thing I can do is I can move my cursor over a cell, hold down my left click button, and drag down to the 2. What I've done there is I've created a range. Up in the, uh, the top left corner, uh, you'll see a, a little area that says 2RX1C. That means I've selected two rows by one column worth of cells. Now I've highlighted this area and if I move this cursor down to the bottom right corner there 
it turns from a fat cross into a little thin cross. What Excel detects is that there's a pattern here, 0, 1, 2. If I move my cursor down there, left click and drag, it's going to keep that pattern going and I can drag this all the way down to whatever. I'll just drag it down to say 10 seconds. Okay. I can also go back to this cell and I can add a little note saying what my units are and it's always a good idea to do this sort of bookkeeping. Okay, now theta, which is going to be in radians. I just typed that in. It kind of went over the edge of this cell. Uh, if that, if you want to clean that up a bit, you can change the width of these columns. I can cursor over a column B, for example. If I click now, it's going to select every cell in that column. If I go down to row 3, it, it'll select every cell in that row. If I go to the very edge of column B, see my cursor change there? I can manually change the width of that column. If I want to automatically set the column width to the widest cell in the column, I can go here and I can double click and it set the column width based on my theta brackets rad entry here. Alright, so what's theta? Theta is equal to omega 10 up here times whatever time value is on the left. Right here, theta is equal to the same b2 entry multiplied by the next value of time. So what's it equal to? It's, I'm going to type, it's equal to what's in cell b2. I'm going to go up to b2 and click, and it automatically puts b2 in my current cell, multiplied by, which is the asterisk key, multiplied by the time value, which is the cell just to the left here. And I'll hit return. Okay, and I can do the same thing over here. I can say that at time t equals 1, theta is going to be equal to 10 for omega times the time value in A7. And I can keep doing this equal to 10 times that time value. Okay, I can do that all the way down, so there's a more efficient way of doing that, though. If I, I have a formula in this cell. If I click on this cell, I can see up here equals B2 times A6. What happens if I copy that with Control C? I see this little uh, blinking dotted line. So I've, I've selected copy for this. Now if I drag down here and hit control V for paste, what happens? Okay, something that I didn't necessarily want. But let's look at what's in this cell. This cell is equal to B2 times A6. If I copy it one row down, it makes it equal to B3 times A8. Sorry, equal this one equals this one is B2 times A6. I copied it here, it becomes B3 times A7. Copy it down here, it becomes B4 times A8. So when you copy the cell, it's going to sort of shift down or over all of the cells that were referenced in the original formula, which is these two. I like the fact that right here it's something times that time value this value of theta should be something times that time value. So I'm happy that it turned A6 into A7 and A8, uh, but I'm not happy that it turned B2 into B3 and B4. I want to lock the B2 in effect so that when I cut and when I copy and paste cells it doesn't change this. Uh, so I'm going to cursor in between B and 2. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the 2. What that's going to do is it's going to lock it so that it doesn't change the row from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, etc. when I copy this cell downward. Okay, so let me hit return here. And now I'm going to go Control C. I'm going to select my paste region and I'm going to Control V paste it. And now this looks much better. This is equal to B2 times A6. This one is equal to B2. It didn't 
move the b2 reference down, times a7, b2 times a8, and so on. So the reference that I made in this cell to a6 is called uh, um, just a, a general reference, um, a relative reference. This reference to b$2 is an absolute reference to rho2. A similar thing happens if you have a formula and you try and copy it across different columns. It would change B to C, D, E, and so on. So you can also lock the reference to the column as well as the row if you want. Anyway, I now have theta. Now I want to plot X in meters. I want to plot Y in meters. Now as you go, you'll pick up a lot of techniques about formatting. For example, um, up on the top here, if I go to the Home tab, I can click on a whole bunch of cells, and just like in Microsoft Word, I can right justify them, or I can center align them. I'll right justify these. What's x? x is equal to r, so I click the cell which has the value of r, times cosine of theta. I encourage all of you to go into Excel's help and browse all the different commands or just get a sense of all the different commands that are available. If I just start typing cosine, when I type the letter C I get every single command that begins with the letter C. There's a lot of them. If I type O I get every co co um, command that begins with CO. I can either go down and select cosine, see there's hyperbolic cosine as well, or I can just type cos. Cosine of what? In brackets, I am going to select the argument for the cosine function, which is theta, which is, in this case, b6. So I'll cursor over b6. I'll put in a right bracket, hit return, and there you go. Now, do I want to copy and paste this cell as is down to here, or do I need to do some absolute referencing? Well, the thing is I want the value in this cell to be b1 still, but now instead of times a6 it'll be, sorry, I want this one to be equal to b1 still times the cosine of this value of theta. So when I cut and paste this down, I want to go cosine b6, b7, b8, but I want to keep the reference to b1, so I will do an absolute reference there. And I will cut, so I copy and paste. And now I have a bunch of numbers. Well, hopefully this is cosine usoidal. For y, I'll say y is equal to b1, but I'll go up and lock the reference to the call to the row. So that's b1 times the sine of theta. Return. Control C, copy and paste. Okay, so now I've got that, that table of values. If someone comes along and says, oh, the boss has changed R to 0.3, I change that and watch what happens. The whole table updates automatically. So that's brilliant. I don't need to redo all that work. Okay, next let's plot this. I want to plot X and Y as a function of time. How do I do that? Uh, whenever I learn a new piece of software, if it's got pull-down tabs like this, I always go through them and I just sort of take a look around at what are my options here. Under Insert, I can insert all these different kinds of graphs. The graph I want to insert is called a scatter plot, also known as an XY chart. And when I click on that, I can get a whole bunch of different types here. I can get uh, a scatter plot which just plots a bunch of points. I can plot the points with a smooth curve between them. I can just get a curve through the points. Okay, I'll select this one, a scatter plot with smooth lines and markers. Now, there's nothing on there. I need to basically tell it what data I want to plot. Now, I think the simplest way to do this is to... I can actually drag my cursor and select all this data. And it's going to, when I go now and insert a scatter plot, what do I get? 
I get a plot with three data series on it. If I select all this data, it's going to take the first column and put that on the x-axis, which is what I want, because I'm varying time and I want to see how x and y change as a result of me changing the time. Uh, it's the three series that are on this plot are theta versus time, which is a straight line with slope of 10. I don't want that. I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to delete that. Now I'm left with series 2, which is the second column after my time. So that's x. x is red and y is green. Now I can go in. I can change the uh, colors uh, of these lines. I can change the marker shapes and sizes. Um, if I want to change this so that instead of series 2 it says x, I can click on the x plot and when I do that it highlights the data so I know I, I clicked on the right thing. If I want to give this a, the, the right name I can go up here into the formula bar for this line on the plot and I can in between the left parenthesis and the comma there I can put in quotes what I want to call this so I'll put in X and I'll hit return and now that's called X instead of series 2. If I click on series 3 now the Y cells are highlighted so I'll go up here and I will put in Y and now I've got X and Y in my legend so it's easier to interpret this plot. If you're going to be presenting plots in a report you want to put titles on there, you want to put labels on the X and Y axes. So up here under chart layouts there are a number of layouts I can use. This one I can see from this little icon that this one is going to have a title and an axis title for X and Y. So if I click on this and then double click I can highlight all the text if I double click correctly. I can call this motion of point A on the end of that rotating link. I can go into my, oops, I can click on axis title and then double click or backspace. I can call this X or Y and then I can put the units in square brackets if I want. And I can either hit return or I can click somewhere outside this box. So that's X or Y in meters. Down here I can click on that and select and I can call this time in seconds. Uh, if I don't want my x-axis labels here in the middle, if I want my x-axis labels to be on the bottom, really I want them to be down here at y or x is minus 0.25. If I click, double click on the vertical axis, I have all these axis options. I can set my maximum and minimum values. Here, for example, I want the horizontal axis to cross the vertical axis at minus 0.25. And what that does is it moves these horizontal labels from crossing the y-axis at 0 to crossing down here at minus 0.25. All right, problem with this? I think so. This was supposed to be cosinusoidal and sinusoidal. So what's going on? Well, what's going on is that our pl points are too uh, far apart here. Just look at the values of the angle theta for which we're plotting. We're taking one second increments here. And our, uh, our, rot our rotational speed is 10 radians per second. Maybe that's not physically meaningful to you. Let me just convert our theta into degrees. So I type that in. I'm going to double click on the right edge of the column E here to expand my column. To convert from radians to degrees, degrees are equal to the angle in radians, uh, let's see, divided by pi. If I just type pi and then a left bracket, sorry, a left parenthesis and a right parenthesis, that gives me pi. I don't need to keep typing out 3.14159265358979793. So degrees is radians over pi times 180. Uh, I can copy and paste that. So as we can see here, I'm plotting the motion of this point 
one second after the last point, but every second this um, this point this link goes around 572 degrees. So really, if I want to get a nice smooth curve here, I should be plotting a number of data points every rotation of the crank. How can I do that? Instead of going from 0 to 1, let me go from 0 to 0 0.1. And that updated the graph and made it a little bit strange. But uh, I haven't finished updating my time points yet. I can do the same trick I did before. I can click 0 and 0 0.1. Sorry, click and drag 0 and 0 0.1. Move my cursor to that little uh, square dot on the bottom. And I can drag down here. And now my time, instead of going from 0 to 10, it's going to go from 0 to 1. And now it updates all of the x and y calculations immediately. Now I'm plotting x and y every 57 degrees of crank rotation. So I'm going to get about 6 points per rotation. And that's going to smooth things out. At least now it looks like I've got a constant amplitude throughout each cycle. If I want to go 2 seconds, I can continue to drag this down, let's say to 2 seconds, and I can now, if I want to copy these formulas and fill in this space, I can go across here, click and drag, control C, and then I can put my paste area as the remaining empty cells here. Control V. Now I've got two seconds worth of data at a much finer resolution. I'll get a much smoother curve. Now, the original plot only went from 0 to 1 second because if I click on one of these series and go up here to the formula bar, it tells me that this plot is of data that goes from A6 to A16. for the x values and d6 to d16 for the y values. I can go in here and manually change this. Uh, I want to plot from row 6 down to row 26. So let me change the 16s to 26s here and it'll plot a larger part of my spreadsheet. I just did that for y. I haven't done it for x yet. So here y goes for the two second range that I've expanded. X only goes still for the first 10 points. I'll go back in and I'll modify that as well. Okay, so now I've got two seconds of data.